everybody, welcome back to this week's poll, or as Josh would like to say, what are we reading? That's a good question, Josh. And today, like always, guys, we're going to give you our big three main issues first, then go through everything else that we read and give it a, our, our new rating. And also, if you listen throughout this entire video, we are going to be giving a code word or code phrase out that uh, was going to get you guys come in here. You'll get 20% off of a select issue. We'll say at some point, at some point during this podcast, but we're not going to give it to you right away. So. If you want that discount, make sure to listen. And we're going to start right off with Tony Stark, Iron Man number one, came out today, written by uh, Dan Slott. Artist is Valerio Shitty, not to be confused with Shitty. And actually, I really enjoyed this issue. Um, I was actually a little skeptical, especially the, from the very beginning. The art is not exactly what I want from an Iron Man issue, but I was like, okay, I can go with it. Um, but the first couple pages, I was a little worried about this issue. I was like, shit, maybe Dan Slott is going a completely different direction with Tony Stark than I was kind of hoping for. But then, of course, the first couple issues are a flashback. Then it goes into what's really going on with the uh, first couple pages, I should say, not first couple issues. First couple pages are a flashback. Then it gets into present day. And we see that Dan Slott definitely brings his own flavor of uh, Tony Stark into this book. He, it, it reminds me a little bit of what he did with Spider-Man. He had a very distinct style with Spider-Man, and now it's translated over here to Tony Stark. Sure, there's a little bit of Rob, Robert Downey Jr.-isms in there, but I can't say they're so blatant o and over the top that it's distracting. It feels like it's it's trying to rip off the movies. It feels like its own thing. The great thing I love about this, and I should have I should have realized it when thinking about Dan Slott's run on Amazing Spider-Man, is how much slot revolutionized the Amazing Spider-Man series as far as technical advances, right? The way thing, especially during Superior Spider-Man with Doc Ock, was doing all these things for Parker Industries or uh, whatever uh, tech company he was working for at the time. But he takes those ideas and Dan Slott has a great imagination because he starts doing stuff with, with Iron Man here in this issue that I was not expecting. And it's actually things that I'm like, why isn't, why hasn't Iron Man been doing that kind of stuff, you know? And so, uh, anyway, so we get to meet Iron Man, we get to meet Tony Stark, and what he's doing is recruiting this new guy to come work for him based on some of his uh, robotic schematics and some of his inventions and stuff. We see what uh, kind of the world that Tony's been living in now. We get a fan favorite back, uh, Joe Costa character is back in here. You'll remember her from The Mighty Avengers that Dan Slott actually also wrote when uh, Pym was the head of The Mighty Avengers. And then, you know, a big, a big fan favorite villain comes in. And I'm not going to spoil who it is, but it was a great surprise to me. And the armor that Tony busts out to fight this thing is fucking awesome. I hope one day they make an action figure out of this thing. It's awesome. Uh, but another great thing is that the art does seem to get better and better. Um, I like the way this villain is drawn. I like the big suit that Tony dons. I like his regular suit. It's, you know, just a lot of advances. But the great thing is that this thing feels fresh. It feels technically... Uh, I don't know, stronger than most of the Iron Man that we've seen before. They have they kind of stopped focusing on what he can do as an inventor and a technical genius of late. Uh, you know, Ben just kind of, he didn't really delve too much into it. This one's a lot of technical jargon, a lot of the things that I would come to expect and want from an Iron Man issue, a lot of different ways of using that technology. And the best thing is that this issue also feels like there's some intrigue to it. Tony, he's putting on the bravado, but there feels like he's kind of keeping a secret close to the vest. He doesn't really outwardly state that, but you kind of get that feeling. Towards the end of the book, you find out that, you know, there's uh, some collusion going on. There's some uh, mystery, some spy stuff going on, which I think is just a great recipe. You add all those elements together, you're going to get a great uh, Iron Man story out of this. I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm going to unveil our new rating system today. And I'm going to give this issue 4.75 Space Forces. As an Iron Man fan, I'm a big I'm a big fan of this issue. I'm really hoping that it can uh, keep up and expand on this because, you know, like Spider-Man, there's always the fun, lighthearted intros during the arcs, and then it gets really serious. Dan Slott has a good job. He does a good job of kind of navigating that uh, story arc of highs and lows, and I really I think that he can do some really good with uh, with Tony Stark here. So I think this is a very uh, very strong prospect and potential for the future of Iron Man in the comic books. I'm excited to see what Dan Slott can do. I got one quick question for you. How sure. do you feel about them kind of making Tony a little bit of a child of the 90s almost? Oh, because of the song they play at the end? Yeah, the song they play, and he's definitely, like, in his teens. Yeah, I definitely a thought about that. that. Yeah, I definitely thought about that. And you know what? They they keep updating these characters every decade or so. You know, I mean, at first it was, like, the Cold War, Vietnam War. Now it's the Iraqi War that all kind of shaped Tony Stark. You know, it's fine. I don't care if these characters don't age. I just want to keep reading them. So it doesn't bother me too much, but I did I did think about that. Yeah, it was kind of weird. All right, but so anyway, Josh, like you it. read it a couple of sentences in your rating? Um, well, I'll just say, uh, I mean... For me, when I was reading it, I'm not a huge Iron Man fan. 
Um, but I did, the ending is what sold me. The ending is what kind of went like, okay, I like this. Dan Slott definitely is, he does have that same kind of uh, chemistry of the way he writes his stories. Um, so I would probably give it a 3.75 Space Forces. Are you, you sound like you're questioning it. Are you sure? Is that a firm decision? Are you thinking higher or lower maybe? I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm no. 3.75. You're firm on this now. All right. 3.75 Trump Space, space forces. forces. All right. And adding, adding Trump Space Forces. Sorry, in. yeah. Trump 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 more space wordy forces. than what it really needs to be. I know. Sorry, my bad. Okay, Dallas, you read it as well? You got I a did. Couple, some um, thoughts? I'm in agreement with Josh. I'm not a huge Iron Man fan, so this is kind of a new entry for me. So I was a little lost on certain things they were referencing. However, I did really enjoy the issue. I did see some Robert Downey Jr. isms, but not as much as I thought I would. Not have to distract right. you. Right, and it was funny enough at times, but not overly funny. Action was great. Artwork was unique. Um, I think I'm going to go basically in the middle of you two. I'm going to go four. Okay. S yeah. Trump Space Forces. <laughs> four Space Forces. Quick okay. question. How did you feel about uh, Joe, uh, Joe Casta or whatever? I love Joe Casta returning. I, I think it's great. I think that's my um, favorite thing about it other than the end. And I, one thing I didn't mention that I will say here, just to kind of, you know, cut off the, uh, the the conversation. I think this is actually a good jumping on point for anyone who's not really an Iron Man fan. Totally. Uh, you, you say there are a couple questions you have. I'm not sure what they are. We can talk about yeah. it, but one thing is, I think it's a great jumping on point too. There's no mention of him being adopted, so hey. <laughs> I was waiting for you to make a uh, joke, Josh. Let's keep you know, that I was going to give him one podcast where I don't one, mention one, it. So you mentioned it. I, yeah, but hey, I'm, I'm mentioning that there's an absence of that, well, and I'm, I'm happy about it. But all right, Dallas, what did you read today? I read Justice League number two. I read the first one, so this is the continuation of the story. What after team no is on Justice. this one again? Uh, this is Snyder, Jimenez. Jimenez. Dick. And Sanchez. <laughs> All right. Um, Dirty Sanchez. This one, uh, I think. Sanchez. I think we reviewed this the first one before, and it's very Justice League Unlimited in terms of the team. Right. Um, you pick up with some elements of other enemies from the first issue. Um, this part of the story arc, in terms of the villains, was probably the weakest point for me personally. Um, it just kind of felt like the outlier in it. I was more interested in what's going on with John Stewart because we get a little bit of story arc with him. So that was interesting because they're referencing something that troubled him in his past, and this is what's halting him from doing anything heroic in certain. Well, I think it's from uh, the No Justice series. It, yeah, I believe. Without <clears throat> going too far into it, he's arresting someone, and Batman and the Justice League's approaching him and being like, "Hey, we need you. Come help us." And he's like, "Just get Hal." And they're like, "No, we need you. You're, you you've been focusing so much on being a soldier. You're an architect. We need that." And so that was nice to kind of see them break down Jon Stewart's character because I feel like he's a character sometimes that doesn't get enough love on both of his sides, being an architect as well as a soldier. Um, there was some stuff with The Flash which Jake and I had talked about. He thinks it's kind of goofy. I'm intrigued by it, but I think that it's goofy, but I'm intrigued to see what they do with it if that makes sense. Um, outside of that, there's a lot of things that pose more questions than answers. Yeah. So. I'm leaving that more towards Snyder, what he's been doing recently, posing a lot more questions than answers. Um, there's an interesting addition. To the uh, Lanterns. To, to the Lanterns. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to give away what it is. I know DC's teased it and advertised it for a while, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to give it away. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I'll just leave it at that. Um, you get some team interactions that I wasn't sure I'd get, like uh, Superman and John. I wasn't sure that you would get that interaction, but you do, and they actually show that, you know, John Jones is one of the most powerful Justice League members by talking about it, which is nice because he doesn't get a lot of love sometimes. Um, I would recommend the book as long as you've been following the book. Um, if you haven't been following No Justice and Justice League and Metal, I'm sure you'd probably be confused this isn't a good jumping on point because I'm a little confused. Um, this one, I think I'll be a little more critical. I'm going to give this one three out of five Space Forces. Okay. Well, I read the issue too, and uh, I, my thing with this is that I don't think Snyder is very good at writing teams. I don't think he's very good at, at applying a distinct voice for each character. And I'm starting to see some of the growing pains here because I don't feel like um, I don't. I don't think. Ba Actually, I don't even think Batman's written that well in this issue, which is weird to me because he did such a stellar Batman run. But when I think back, Snyder did really well with internal monologue version of Batman, not really spoken dialogue. Not liking the way he's writing Flash. His his Superman's a little clumsy. His Martian Manhunter is odd because there's this like third 
party omniscient narrator at points that comes and goes randomly. Not a fan of that. My favorite parts of this book actually were everything to do with the villains, mostly because Luther is getting the, Le the Legion of Doom together, and the things that Luther is talking about has me the most intrigued. And I think um, Luther is who he has probably the best voice for in this book. So anyway, for me, I'm actually going 2.25 Space Forces. Um, I'd have to agree. I read Justice League 2 as well. Um, I, his Flash, and me being a huge fan of Flash, I love Flash. Uh, I thought it was, he doesn't know how to write for it Flash. It felt like Wally. It feels like it, a Wally version felt, of Flash. I mean, it didn't even feel like a Wally. It, it, even it's if he was writing erratic, for Wally, it, wouldn't, you know? it just didn't feel right. It didn't land for me that well. Um, but yeah, his Batman's horrible. The only thing that, I, I mean, I'm intrigued by the book. It's not like super bad. But the, I agree, though. The the spot where he's really good at writing is uh, for Luthor. Um, that's the only part that really got to me really intrigued by it. So with that being said, I actually would give it 2.5 Space Forces as well. Okay, so we're all kind of hovering the same area. About three, okay. two yeah. and a half. 2.25. Two, two and a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Between two and three, basically. It's not yeah, great, yeah. but if you're a Justice League fan and you've been following it, you should probably continue to follow oh, it to yeah. get I'll, answers. I'll say I like this issue more than the first issue. I agree. Um, but again... It's actually not what Josh is about to talk about next, but there are some odd similarities between this Justice League run and the Avengers new oh, run. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, the other thing, too, is uh, I will say this. It's the better of this, um, better thing that I've read from Snyder recently. Yeah. Metal was awful, and the Justice was, uh, The first issue was kind of eh for me. This is actually... Not bad. Yeah, I, I do have to agree with you guys really quickly that Luthor, I think, had a great voice, but I would like to say that I thought John Stewart had a great voice. You, I think he, out of the heroes, bad. out of the heroes, he stood out to me as opposed to everyone else. I've been spoiled bad. with Robert Venditti. The other thing too, just real quick, is that we're seeing a really <laughs> like almost thin, emaciated-looking uh, Martian Manhunter there in the one panel weirded me out. I'm used to seeing this like big, bulky son of a bitch, but they're like going with like a skinnier version. I don't know, it weirded me out, but okay. Anyway, Josh, you are on to... Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm going to review Amazing Spider-Man 801. This is uh, written by Dan Slott, and the art is done by Marcos Martin. It's actually Dan Slott's last Spider-Man issue because he's betraying us and going to Iron Man. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, if you've been listening to our podcast, you know that me and Dallas absolutely, or actually all three of us, Sorry. absolutely love the last few issues. This is more just paying tribute to Spider-Man, um, and that's the way I take it. Uh, the beginning starts off um, in the like kind of just like a real briefing of Spider-Man origin, and then you know a few weeks after he became Spider-Man, um, it's a story that someone's telling about uh, when Spider-Man saved his life, essentially, where Spider-Man came in and stopped the robbery, and, he, and this man, it's it's being narrated by him, and he's telling about how because of Spider-Man. <clears throat> Uh, he was able to, he was actually showed up late, kind of late, but he was able to make it to an event that was actually really crucial in anybody's life. And it just kind of goes through this man's life um, about how, when he needed to be in his life. And goes through his life real fast, just kind of skims through it. And then you get to modern day time and he kind of just pays Spider-Man back. And it's supposed to be in today's time. Uh, the story is actually really, it's written really well. It's kind of overdone, this whole premise of what's pay respects to Spider-Man by showing one person's story on uh, a good deed that he has done before. Uh, but this one's actually really touching. Um, it has some moments where I'm just kind of, uh, uh, I kind of wish it just kind of ended at 800 though, yeah. because that was like a really good note, just boom, hit it right there, boom. But this is a nice little filler issue, just kind of a nice little pay tribute to Spider-Man, just like how Action Comics 1000 was for uh, Superman. Um, with that being said, I will give this book, uh, I'm just dishing out 3.5s, 3.5 Space Forces. I think I would actually agree with you on your rating. I think I'd give it 3.5 Space Forces as well. Like you said, it was just a nice tribute to Spider-Man, seeing it through someone's eyes. Also, as you said, it's kind of been overdone. Um, I, I, at first, I really was like, this is literally a filler issue. Some stuff happens. I was like, maybe it's not. And then it went right back to being a filler issue. And I was like, okay, it's a nice end. But like you said, I think 800 would have been the true send-off. Yeah, this one's definitely, a, out of all those kind of stories that I've read of like these this kind of premise, this one was a little bit more touching at moments than other ones I've read. I mean, I, I definitely would say it's probably a little bit more touching than any of the stories that were in Action Comics 1000. 
Uh, I mean, there's a part where I was like, oh god, am I gonna cry? <laughs> am I gonna am I gonna fucking cry in front of these guys? <laughs> god damn it, don't cry, Josh. Don't, don't fucking cry. And then he cried a little bit. And we yeah. looked away to help him, but yeah. you know. Well, it sounds to me, I didn't get a chance to read this issue, it sounds to me like this is kind of just Dan Slott's denouement to his entire decade-long run. I'm sure the guy deserved it, 10 years oh, writing yeah. Spider-Man. Haven't had a chance to read it, I'm, I'm going to read it uh, tomorrow probably, but... Alright, so there's our big three issues for the week, guys, and um, we are going to move on to our other things that we talked about. Just give them real quick ratings and stuff, but before I do that, um, what is it? Jerk mode? What was the... <laughs> Full on jerk mode. Full on jerk mode. That is the phrase. If you guys come in tomorrow, use that phrase. Come and get 20% off number one issue of Tony Stark Iron Man. Also, not the act of a full on jerk mode. Just, just the, the phrase. phrase. Just, just say it Full to us. on yep. jerk mode. All right. And the next issue I read this week was Aquaman number 37 written by Dan Abnett. Art is by Federici. And man, I'm so glad Federici's back because this art is gorgeous. But... Anyway, if you guys have been ta if you've been reading Aquaman at all, you know that um, Coram Wrath is taking over at Atlantis. He's bonded with this dark entity, and he's been physically deformed. He was actually named the king of uh, of Atlantis, and so now everyone's kind of ganging up on Coram Wrath. Everyone who used to defend the king is now against him. And Arthur Curry, everybody, you know, they've got this uh, this plan to basically demolish Atlantis and start from the beginning again. They got to stop him. Anyway, I've been loving this Aquaman run. I'm going to give it uh, 3.5. Space Forces. Real quick, that cover is beautiful. I just want to throw. Oh, it's that a out great there. cover. You it's guys look amazing. at amazing. Yeah, if you look at the picture we've got up right now, it's just a weird fish-looking dude with a crazy eye. It's a beautiful cover. It scares me. Uh, <laughs> the next issue I'm going to talk about is X-Men Gold number thirty. It's gonna, it's supposed to be the uh, the wedding of Kitty Pride and Colossus. Now I'm not going to give away what exactly what happens. If you've been reading up to this point, you kind of can see it coming a mile away, but there is a nice surprise at the end. There are some touching moments in here, especially if you um, have been reading a lot of the other uh, peripheral X-Men titles, um, maybe the smaller ones, but it's a good issue. It, I saw it coming. I didn't really feel like I was surprised by a whole lot. There's some good interactions between characters, but i give this one a solid 3, uh, 3.0 Space Forces. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 28. It's, a, it's part of the Shattered Grid. And, you know, this one I've been kind of lost on for a while because I, did, I didn't read or watch uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers after Mighty Morphin. After the movie came out and I saw different actors as different rangers, I was like, I'm out. This makes no sense to me. Um, so there's all these different versions of the rangers, like the space and the... Uh, yeah. How fitting space and like cyber force or jungle force and samurai. Oh, the space force. Yeah, all the samurai, all the other mystic force. Yeah, there's all these other weird ones. So I'm not exactly who, not exactly sure who's who, but this issue is finally giving me an idea of what Lord Draken's trying to do and what his actual goal is. So I enjoyed this one a little bit more than the past couple issues. I'm gonna give this one a solid 2.75 space forces. Okay. okay. Well, leading into mine, I read Peter Parker: The Spectacular Spider-Man Annual Number One. Um, this one has two stories in it, the first one being much longer. It's basically sort of J. Jonah Jameson's story. He's trying to track down Spider-Man to solve this, this robbery in progress. Um, the second one is kind of just Spider-Man living day to day. It seems like no one knows who he is really, and they keep referencing Moon Knight 30,000 times for no reason. Um, I was not very impressed with the art first off in the first story. I thought it was god-awful. The second story was unique, but it still didn't do anything for me. Um, I would not recommend picking this up. I'm probably giving this one like a one and a half Space Force. Yikes. Ooh, okay. I think that's almost our lowest score. I think, it might no, I think I gave something a point five one time. I can't remember what it was. It was probably something Snyder really I'm sure it was. Um, all right, what else my, you got? My else? next one, which we all actually read, was Man of Steel number four. Mm -hmm. This one, I was impressed with it. Now, it's not my favorite Man of Steel so far. Who's the artist in this one? I can't remember. Uh, the artist was, was it McGuire? McGuire, yeah. McGuire. Um, the art pointing it out was actually really good. I like the way they drew Superman a lot. Um, the like the way they on Hal was interesting too. Yeah, that one. I didn't like that. I, I liked it in, in some frames. In other frames it looked odd, which you pointed out the one frame. Yeah. Um, this one's definitely very straightforward and you kind of get some resolution to previous story arcs that they had set up. Um, I enjoyed it, so I'll give this one uh, three and a half Space Forces. Okay, what about you, Josh? What would you? I would give it a, a I'd give it three and a half. Same. I think I think it deserves three and a half. The one thing uh, that kind of I don't know I'm kind of iffy on it. It's just like the end uh, the end story in Action Comics 1000. Um, there's a gap in this story where there's a the fight, and that's actually in Action Comics 1000, the last right, story. Right. 
um, and they don't actually show that in this book. So if you get um, Man of Steel, you might also, and you didn't get Action Comics 1000, you might want to pick that bad boy up. We do have two copies here in the shop. Um, also, who said that? <laughs> Yeah, that was fucking Sean Connery. Uh, <laughs> man, that guy, man. Um, no, I read I read this issue. I liked it. I liked it more than issue three. It's, to me, issue three was probably the most the low point of this year so far. No, but I'm digging this one. I, I'm liking this, the Superman stuff. As Josh pointed out, there's kind of a cinematic element to this. So while you're reading, you kind of have to let your brain do a little bit of wandering and mm -hmm. connecting certain things. Um, that can make it a little bit of a difficult read. But for me, I'm going to give it 3.5 Space Forces. So we're all in agreement on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my final one this week was Judge Dread Under Siege. Now this. One came out last week. No, it came out about it's, two. It's three been a couple weeks. weeks yeah. Okay, but no one ever reviewed it. So this one yeah. is my challenge of the week, where I'm trying to challenge myself something that I normally wouldn't pick up. Um, I'm not a huge Judge Dredd fan just because I've read a lot, so I don't know a whole lot. So you kind of get introduced into the character, who he is, and his morals, and what he believes in. Um, there's some event that happens with mutants, so it's kind of weird because I also read X-Men Gold, so it's weird thinking about mutants and then going to read this different <laughs> type of mutants. Um, basically heroes coming in to save the day sort of thing. Um, arts, very interesting. I actually liked it quite a bit. If you're a Judge Dredd fan, I'm assuming you would like this. I liked it. So I'm going to be nice to it and give it like 3.754. Okay. Space Force. Not bad. I actually liked it and I'm I'm kind of an on again, off again Judge Dredd fan. And I when I read it, I would probably give it about a 3. A 3? Uh, yeah, I've read, and that's only because I've read some uh, good, I've read better Judge Dredd issues. But this is actually a really good starting on point for someone who's just kind of intrigued by the character. Yeah, I felt like I wasn't confused a whole lot. I was just, because yeah. like I said, I haven't read a lot, so yeah. it was a nice, like, I'm reading, I'm understanding who he is, what he believes in, what he represents. It's so. perfect for somebody who actually watched the uh, Carl Irving, uh, Carl Urban. Uh, dread. Yeah. I think it's perfect. It's a little starting on point. All right, Josh. What else did you read this week? All right, I read uh, Gideon Falls issue four. It's written by Jeff Lemire and Andrea. Andrea Sorrentino, you know, but it's a dude. Yeah. I always assume it's a woman. I know, well, I always, I always well, like. I know it's a dude, so I always like. I always like. It can't be pronounced Andrea. <laughs> like, um, uh, so I just kind of jumped on the series a little bit late compared to everybody else. This uh, book is following a priest and some other dude. Uh, and it's really mysterious. This whole thing is just like a, it's a murder mystery. It's supernaturally. It's dark. It's creepy. It's eerie. This book, uh, it Jeff Lemire and Sorrentino are a perfect team to make to fill this like eeriness in it. And I don't want to tell too much because I, it's something that you need to read piece by piece, and you gotta just kind of go along for the ride. Uh, I absolutely love the series. I'm actually going to give this one a four. Oh wow! Mm, four okay. Space Forces. Or on issue I don't four. think it's going to be for everybody. There's some people that don't like this kind of aspect of comic book tell uh, comic book storytelling. I just think this is like if you are into eerie, creepy, twin peekian, like kind of feel. Yeah, I'm, I'm copywriting like that. that word, twi twin peekian. I like it. Then you will love it. Uh, so I give it four points. So you've got that, and you've got Arding. I got Those Arding. Are copyrights. Yeah. I need to yeah. come up with one. No. Okay, and for. Uh, Another one I read was Avengers number three. Uh, Jason Aaron has actually been doing a really good job at, at this storyline. The second issue is kind of, you know, a little slow. This yeah. one's kind of gets out a little bit, but he's moving. You know, that's the whole thing. It's moving across, and we find out a little bit more about the Celestials. And, and or, the Dark Host. And the Dark Host, and what Loki's intentions are. Um, it parallels a lot with the Justice League issue, and I don't know who to blame on that one. Well, this is issue three, Justice League's two. I'm going to go Jason Aaron yeah, first. Yeah, I am too. Granted, it doesn't matter who if they're copying no. each other. This one's executing it better. Yep. Um, I'm going to give this one a 3.5. All right, I'm going uh, to Space Force. I'm going to jump on this one real quick because I read it as well. Um, Ed McGinnis is really hitting his stride oh, yeah, in the arts too, man. He's just getting better and better with each issue. Uh, I'm really, I'm really loving the fact that Jason Aaron is actually acknowledging the past between these characters. Like Jason Aaron has been reading these series, these other series that he's not been writing apparently. Come to yeah, Comatoni, um, Hulk in the Trunk, a few other things here and there that I'm like, these are great little nods. If you're if you're reading other titles in the Marvel Universe, this is a great thing to, to pick up and go, wow, that's actually acknowledging that shit. I feel like we haven't had that since Bendis' Avengers. Oh, yeah, I was about to say that. Um, I'm loving the way, I love the voice that he's lending to Cap and Iron Man and Carol, so I'm going to go right with you, man. This is 3.75. No, 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 yeah, fuck it. I'm giving a four. You're it's giving a four? four space I was really I'm loving tight. this series. I was really, I was like, oh, I don't know where I'm going to go. That's why I went to 3.75. Yeah, and like, so Ed McGinnis' art is just better and better it's, each issue. The, the best thing about this is this is the first time since Ben. Well, granted, I just recently started reading Bendis, but I don't normally read Avengers team-up titles because nobody. It's, you get a lot of that Snyder with Justice League. You just like they, 
you can't really tell who's who and the writing on each, the voice on each character isn't good. Aaron's killing it. Yeah, he's got a distinct voice for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Even yeah. with Carol Danvers to Tony to Cap to Black Thor, Panther to Loki, Dark Strange, yeah. to Doctor Strange. I mean, Ghost Rider. Even Odin. I actually like Ghost Rider in this. Oh issue. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I actually like this version of yeah. Ghost Rider for the first time yep. ever. Same here. So, so uh, Dallas, quit looking at me like that. You need to read it. Check it oh, out. I'm not looking at you, sir. I'm just sitting comfortably. Oh, okay. okay. And Josh, oh, your last okay. issue. Last issue is uh, Champions 21. Uh, I really love the series, and uh, then Wade kind of ruined it, and then Wade's <laughs> off of it now. Now it's uh, Jim Zub, and the artist is Sean Zaski. 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 It's got an either. Zaski. Yeah. Uh, this book is it's kind of getting a little bit more uh, politically driven. I always like the champions, and when it's good, what by Wade and where it is now, it kind of reminds me of. Um, Marvel's answer to 90s Young Justice. Okay. Um, and with that being said, this issue was, eh, it was it was fair. I would probably give it a 2.5. I think it is a pr uh, Space Forces. I would, I think it's perfect for someone who really likes those teen team up books. I've said that millions of times. Okay. All right, I'm gonna throw guys, you guys a quick loop here. Um, outside of the issues that are main issues, the three that we read, um, I want you guys to pick your favorite. I'll go first. My favorite out of the, everything that we've talked about today, I'm going to go Aquaman. Aquaman was my favorite outside of Tony Stark number one. Oh, outside of our main ones. Okay. Yes, outside okay. of our main issues. <laughs> Dallas, right. you got a favorite issue outside of the main one you talked about, which would be Justice League 2? Um, honestly, I'm probably going to go the same. Tony Stark, Iron Man. Okay. Okay. Um, I would, I'd go Gideon Falls. All right. I might have to yeah. check that one out. Hey, you will like it. I think that you should wait until it comes out and trade, though. I probably will since it's on four now. All right, guys. Well, we really appreciate you guys listening. If you got the code word somewhere here embedded in this video, make sure you come in tomorrow so you can get your 20% off of Tony Stark Iron Man number one. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you for listening. Peace.